In this video, we will talk about case three of evaluating limits algebraically, which is when we get indeterminate forms. All right, so the scenario, remember, is we want to evaluate the limit as x approaches a of a function f of x. So remember, we always start by trying to plug in x equals a. And if we do that and we get either zero over zero or plus or minus infinity over plus or minus infinity, or infinity minus infinity, so a huge, huge thing minus another huge thing, or we get zero times infinity, or we get infinity to the zero, or one to the infinity, or zero to the zero. These, all of these things that I've just listed, these are what are called indeterminate forms. Indeterminate forms. And that means, the word indeterminate literally means they can't be determined. Indeterminate means can't be determined. Can't be determined just by looking at them. So the moral there is if you plug in and you get one of these indeterminate forms, then we must simplify first. We must simplify first. So I can't just tell what's going on by looking at it. So I got to simplify and maybe after simplifying, I'll be able to tell. But this is the case that shows up most often. Shows up most often. All right, let's look at an example where we evaluate the limit as x approaches 2 of x to the third minus 8 over x minus 2. So we start by plugging in. Remember, that is always our first step. If I plug in 2, we get 2 to the third minus 8 over 2 minus 2. So we get 2 cubed is 8, 8 minus 8 is 0, and then 2 minus 2 is 0. So we have 0 over 0. That's one of these indeterminate forms. So we have an indeterminate, I'm just going to abbreviate indet, indeterminate form. So we need to simplify. We need to simplify to figure out well, what's going on close to 2. Because remember, the limit means, well, what's happening to the y values as x gets really, really close to 2. We don't care what's happening right at 2. All right. So. You might notice that the numerator factor is using uh, one of our factoring formulas. Well, let's do a brief review. So let's review difference of cubes, a cubed minus b cubed, and then we'll do sum of cubes, a cubed plus b cubed. So difference of cubes, remember, is a minus b times a squared plus ab plus b squared. And remember the shortcut to get sum of cubes from the difference of cubes, if you already know it, is to replace the b with a negative b. And if you do that, this will become a plus b when you replace the b with a negative b. And then you'll get a squared minus ab, replacing that b with a negative b. And then plus, we'll get negative b squared. But when you square the negative, it stays positive. So plus b squared. Alrighty, so x to the third minus 8. I want you to take a minute and see if you can start to factor that. Four, three, two, one, pause the video for a minute and try to factor that. And whoops, it looks like my writing glitched there a little bit and it got shifted, but hopefully I fixed it. Okay, so hopefully you did that. Let's talk about it together now. All right, so we have this limit as x approaches 2. And the top is the difference of cubes. It's something cubed minus something cubed. And then we have x minus 2 on the bottom. So we have the limit as x approaches 2. And then, well, what cubed is x to the third? Well, that's definitely going to be x to the third. And then what cubed is 8? Well, that's 2 cubed. So we have that over x minus 2. And now I'm going to apply the difference of cubes formula. So we get the limit as x approaches 2. And 
in difference of cubes, x takes the role of a, and then the 2 takes the role of b. So I'll get a minus b, which is x minus 2. And then it's the first number squared, which is going to be x squared. And then plus the first number times the second. So that'll be x times 2. And then plus the second number squared. That'll be 2 squared. So that's the top factored over x minus 2. So over x minus 2. And now I see that x minus 2 is a common factor that's been factored out of the top and out of the bottom. So I can cancel it. So what this gives me is the limit as x approaches 2 of x squared plus 2x plus 4. That's what I'm left with. Notice at this point that the thing that was sort of preventing me from plugging in, this x minus 2 on the denominator, because that made the denominator 0, that's gone. So now let's try to plug in. Now let's plug in. And when we plug in, what we get is 2 squared plus 2 times 2 plus 4, which is going to be 4 plus 4 plus 4, which is 12. So we actually first looked at this example back in one of our previous sections in this chapter, and we evaluated this thing using a graph, and we had drawn the graph of this thing, and we got the exact same answer. We got 12. So one other thing that you all might remember from when we did our pre-calculus review, when there was a factor on the denominator, like x minus 2, that had canceled out completely, we used to write the domain restriction that x cannot be equal to 2. To remember that, oh, we, the denominator can't be 0. So when we do a limit, in this case x is approaching 2, it means that x is close to 2 but not equal to 2. It is not allowed to be equal to 2, but not equal to 2. So because of that, we don't need to write that domain restriction. We don't need to write that domain restriction. The domain restriction that x cannot be equal to 2. That domain restriction is actually implied when we write this limit. Okay, so next I want to state an important notational thing, which is when we evaluate limits like this and we simplify a bunch of steps, we need to keep writing that limit in front. We need to keep writing the limit as x approaches 2 until we actually plug in. When, and once we plug in, we can stop writing it. So notice that in our problem, in our problem, we kept writing the limit here, we kept writing the limit in front here, it was still there on this step, and it was still there on this step. We had to keep doing that until we finally plugged in, and then we got to stop writing the limit. If we don't do that, if we don't write that limit in front, it means something different. So that's an important notational thing. All right, so I want to make a final note about this example where we tie in what's going on with the limit to the graph. So if I look at x to the third minus 8 over x minus 2, we now see how to simplify it. It simplifies to x squared plus 2x plus 4. And now when we don't have the limit written in front of this, we got to be mindful of domain restrictions. So here, I definitely need to specify that x is not equal to 2. And this is a quadratic, and the graph of it is a parabola. We had actually graphed this before in an earlier section. The graph of this parabola has a vertex. It has a vertex over at negative 1, 3. The thing that happens because x is not allowed to be equal to 2 in this case is there's a hole in the graph where x is 2. And based off of what we got here, there's a hole when x is 2. And what we just found by getting the limit is that as x gets close to 2, the y values are getting super close to 12. So the limit was telling us what the y coordinate of this hole is. That's visually what was going on. All right, let's look at another example. I want to evaluate the limit 
as x approaches 4 of negative 3x plus 12 over x minus 4 cubed. So for this question, I want to begin by giving you two to three minutes to try this one on your own first. Four, three, two, one. Pause the video and try this for two to three minutes. With these limit questions, it's really valuable to get as much practice as we can. Alrighty, so hopefully you've done that. Let's talk about it together now. So we want to start by plugging in. That's our, always our first step with these limit questions. So that will give us negative 3 times 4 plus 12 on the top. On the bottom, we get 4 minus 4 cubed. So the top is 0 and the bottom is 0. So we have an indeterminate form, which means we need to simplify. We need to simplify this. All right, so simplifying this limit, we get the limit as x approaches 4. And I notice that we can factor out a 3 or maybe even a negative 3 from the top. And I think negative 3 is a little bit nicer because we'll be left with x minus 4. And I see x minus 4 is on the bottom over x minus 4 cubed. And now it can cancel a little bit. This gives me the limit as x approaches 4. Uh, negative 3 is left on the top. On the bottom, we'll have x minus 4 squared. Now let's try plugging in again. So we simplified a little bit. Let's try plugging in again and what, see what happens. If I plug in again, we get negative 3 on the top, 0 on the bottom. So we have a non-zero over a 0. And we've seen this in case 2. This was our strategy was to take one-sided limits. So this limit problem is combining multiple cases together. So let's take the limit from the left and from the right. So the limit as x approaches 4 from the left of negative 3 over x minus 4 squared. What is this going to be equal to? Well, we'll get negative 3 over. And the denominator is getting really, really close to 0. But I'm just going to be more precise now. I don't want to just plug in 0 as I did before because I just made the whole thing undefined. I want to be a little bit more precise and think about, hmm, is the denominator actually a little bit bigger than 0, so positive, or is it a little bit smaller than 0, so negative? And for this one, there's a quick way to tell if it's going to be a little positive or negative. That's the even power. This is always going to be non-negative due to that even power. So our notation for saying it's really close to zero, but a little positive is I put a little exponent, sorry, positive sign it, plus sign in the exponent. Okay, so we've seen before that when you divide a number like three by something really, really, really small, the whole thing is gonna be huge, and the negative in front is gonna be making it negative infinity. If I do the same thing for the limit from the right-hand side of negative three over x minus four squared, I'll get negative and then three. And the denominator again is gonna be really, really close to zero, but positive because of the even power. And that again is gonna give me negative infinity. So as a result, thus, we can say that our limit here, whoops, let's put the limit in front of it, the limit that we had simplified it to, of negative three over x minus four squared, that equals negative infinity. So in terms of our goals, we finished case three of evaluating limits, which is how to handle indeterminate forms.